Welcome back to our Teaching Connect YouTube channel. How do I manage my classroom? If this is a question you found yourself asking, then we have seven tips for you on how to improve classroom management when the activity seems to be uncoordinated with a chaotic buzz. So let's share the tips. The first thing to note is that you come to class prepared for the lesson. Learners can sense when you don't have confidence and can pick up very quickly a lack of understanding of the topic being presented. So be clear around your lesson preparation and method of delivery. This includes planning your lesson according to the 30 or 45 minute period on the timetable. And don't forget about the time it takes to settle the classroom down when learners enter the space. The second thing to remember is that you have to plan the resources, activities and time that you will use to deliver the content. Do encourage and motivate learners. Let them share their ideas on the subject and allow them to freely express their opinions. Give them equal opportunities for participating in the class. Give them feedback on their inputs and don't shoot down their answers. Rather make the effort to mediate the responses. It can become a great way to start debates in the classroom space. Another aspect to remember is that you get to know the names of learners. Calling them by their name personalizes the learning experience for every child and shows that you can recognize them as individuals. Give every learner an identity. Call them on their names, whether it is Tandiwe or Sarah, as opposed to saying, you girl at the back, give me the answer. Also remember to give clear instruction on classroom rules. It sets the tone for your management style. Learners should never have doubts around the parameters of acceptable behavior in the classroom. This doesn't guarantee that some may not try to push the boundaries though. Make a point of commanding attention before you speak to learners. A classic example is, Tell learners to put their pencil down and look at you when you speak to them. Own your space, don't ask for it. Another dimension to remember is that you recognize that all learners have learning experiences that differ. So provide a varied experience for learners in the classroom. Again, as an example, individualize activities and or do group work uh, as opposed to just doing one-on-one -on -one conversation. To recognize the impact of classroom size when planning activities since classroom size differs depending on the institution you find yourself in. Do use creative material and resources to stimulate better understanding in your lessons. Present content that stimulates the senses. See how tech, for example a video, can be integrated into the lesson or work outside or arrange an excursion to a bakery when you're doing a lesson around measurement and ingredients, for example. In other words, contextualize your teaching. The language you use during a lesson also influences understanding. Keep your language usage appropriate to the level of your learners. Break down difficult concepts or use examples that learners can relate to in the immediate environment. In closing out this video, let's recap these seven tips just in case you missed one of them. Number one, be lesson prepared. Number two, encourage participation and motivate learners. Number three, know each learner's name. Number four, set clear classroom rules and boundaries. Number five, prepare preference-based and varied activities. Number six, use material that stimulate the senses. And number seven, use appropriate level in terms of language. This brings us to the end of part one in this series. We look forward to seeing you soon when we present the second topic in our seven part series. Goodbye.